Uh, thankfully, uh, the sun is up, and in some areas, the snow band is actually moving a little north, uh, which is good news because it allows us an opportunity to get out there and clear some of the roads. Uh, this may turn out to be the worst storm in our community's history, uh, surpassing the famed blizzard of 77 for its ferocity. Uh, the blinding snow in our early limited res rescue and response efforts. Uh, there are still likely hundreds of people still stuck in vehicles, uh, including individuals who tried to drive out uh, in the late night hours last night. Uh, the problem is there are parts of the county where it is very, very windy, but they didn't get as much snow. Uh, and so the blizzard conditions exist, but they're not as bad. And it sounds like people tried to traverse in from other areas as well as leave places where they were at safe, a, a location for work to get on the roads and, and just unfortunately got stuck. Our number one priority is coordinating efforts to get to these people. Uh, and that's exactly what, what you, the people that are around me uh, have been doing all night is coordinating with local police, local fire, local EMTs, ambulance, uh, uh, is to get out there. The problem is, in the hardest hit areas, up to two-thirds of emergency response vehicles are stuck. Fire, ambulance, police. Uh, in addition, abandoned vehicles are causing significant problems. Uh, I have to uh, note this. It's not something that we're proud of, but in the worst affected areas, there is no emergency service available. Let me uh, re recite that. In the worst affected areas, there is no emergency service available. This includes the city of Buffalo and the towns of Chictawaga, town of Wanda, the village of Kenmore, town of Amherst, town of Clarence, a town of Lancaster, village of Williamsville. Uh, this is a storm, and we've dealt with some many, many storms. I've dealt with some of the, worked with these people before in some of the most horrible storms we've ever seen. And this is far surpasses all of those storms. There is no emergency service available at this point in the most affected areas. That is not to say that attempts aren't being made. They are. Uh, but there is no guarantee that in a life-threatening emergency situation that they're going to be able to respond immediately. Uh, we were dealing with situations all night, including a, a situation with a, a baby uh, at a, a home and location, which was only a number of blocks away from ECMC on the east side of Buffalo, and they still could not get emergency personnel to there. Uh, due to the severity of the storm, it is unlikely we can provide transport for non-life-threatening situations. Please do not call either the 911 and the 858 snow numbers unless it is a life-threatening situation. These lines have been inundated with calls continually, including individuals uh, just trying to get information on when the snow is going to end, uh, issues associated with restoration of electric power. Uh, these phone numbers are for life-threatening situations at this point. Uh, we have received reports of natural gas and or carbon monoxide backing into homes as a result of furnace and dryer vents that have, are covered with snow. We know it's terrible outside, but it, you got to go out there and make sure your, your furnace vent is clear. Uh, most new uh, high energy efficiency furnaces have the furnace vent at a lower level next to the house does not generally go up like the old ones in the chimney. It goes down in a, the plastic PVC piping that comes out of the side of the house. You gotta make sure those clear uh, to prevent carbon monoxide and or natural gas potentially coming back into the home. Uh, our Department of Public Works is getting equipment back on the roads in the worst affected areas. Uh, that is, a, is something that is a, a, a point of, of, of happiness because we did not have uh, crews on the roads in the overnight hours and, and, and late la afternoon yesterday because of how terrible the conditions were. But as an example of how difficult it is, it took two high lifts from the Department of Public Works, one hour and 40 minutes to get from our Harlem Barnes on Harlem and Clinton to the Emergency Operations Center here in Chicawaga, Broadway and Union. This is a, a, a normally only a two mile drive that would take no more than five minutes. Uh, if the roads were clear. Ten minutes if you get stuck at a stoplight. 
and it took an hour and 40 minutes. But we do have plows on the roads in the Harlem District, which includes Tonawanda and parts of Amherst and Chitawaga in the Clarence District, which includes Clarence, Newstead, uh, Lancaster, where we did not have them. So uh, that is a good sign that our Department of Public Works crews are getting back on the road. I spoke to Mayor Brown earlier this morning, and I, he said the same thing with the Department of Public Works for the city, is they were going to start getting out around 7 o'clock this morning, uh, and hopefully uh, that has occurred. We, uh, I, last night I spoke to Governor Hochul. Uh, I requested uh, her to call up the National Guard. She did. I want to thank Governor Hochul for doing that. The Guard is on en route right now. We originally were going to have them come here to the Emergency Operations Center, but we're sending them right into the city of Buffalo for these life-threatening th uh, rescues. So they're not even coming to our Operations Center. They've already been given information on where to go. And uh, they're assisting the Buffalo PD and Buffalo Fire in rescue operations. Uh, fatalities. Uh, the town of Chictawaga reported to us last night that two people died in separate incidences when emergency medical personnel could not get to their homes in time for medical emergencies. These were not people in vehicles, but these were people in, at their home in two separate instances uh, where, unfortunately, due to the emergency situation they were dealing with, and I don't know what they were, if it was a heart attack, a stroke, something else, I, I don't know, but they, they could not get to them in time because of the conditions to... Uh, to save those individuals. So my deepest condolences goes out to the individuals who lost loved ones last night. We are aware of two, uh, and I'm hoping that's only it. Uh, but as we get out in the daylight hours today, it is possible we will come across more individuals due to the, the severe s situation of last night. Uh, first responders cannot get to emergency situations. I'll give you an example of it. I just uh, received a message from Dr. Myron Glick of Jericho Road who advised me he's talking through a woman through the delivery of her baby with her sister basically delivering the baby for her. Uh, these are the types of situations that are going on all across our community right now. Uh, this is horrible. And, uh, if you are not in the storm area, uh, you have no idea how bad it is. Uh, please do not try to travel into this area. It, is, uh, it can be life-threatening. You can get stuck and we might not be able to get to you. As I've noted, there are people who have been in cars for hours and hours in the overnight hours uh, waiting for rescue because we just could not get to them. Uh, it is uh, a, going to be a storm to remember. Uh, unfortunately, we are not out of the woods yet. Uh, it does appear that the storm band moved a little north. It's actually clear right now at the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, and we're here in Grand Island is starting to get some significant snows. But the winds are still blowing very hard. Uh, blizzard conditions exist. You don't have to have snow falling to have blizzard conditions because the snow can be picked up. Uh, we have seven to eight foot drifts alongside our emergency operations center here, and we know that's the case in other places as well. Uh, the snow is anticipated to continue throughout the daylight hours. Uh, this is uh, going to be an ongoing event, and if the blizzard warnings are correct, they're going to be in effect until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, Christmas morning. So I know a lot of people are wondering what they can do for Christmas Eve, and the best thing you can do right now for Christmas Eve is just stay home. Stay where you are. There are people that are in restaurants. There are people that are in stores. Just stay there. There's nowhere to go. The roads are still not in a position where it's safe for people to be out passable. And, of course, we have a driving ban going on right now throughout all of Erie County. That includes every road in Erie County. State roads, county roads, town roads, city roads, village roads. Every road, there's a driving ban. Uh, and as I said, while it, the conditions may not be as bad in the southern eastern part of the county, where Springville, Concord, Aurora, Holland are, uh, it's not to say blizzard conditions don't exist. There was significant snow that fell. And uh, we don't want anyone even trying to come close to this area that is, was the hardest hit. Uh, with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to our uh, Commissioner of Department of Homeland Security Emergency Services, Dan Neverth, to give some more information on the rescue operations that have been ongoing and uh, some helpful tips for our, our, our residents. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I think probably the most helpful tip that we can give is, is with regards to the carbon monoxide. Uh, when you have an opportunity, if you have some of the family that can get out, Make sure that, of course, the, the exhaust and the air intake vents are, are clear. 
um, know how to take care of one another, check on your neighbors. Those are the most important things I think that we can do right now because your access to other areas is extremely limited. And when I talk about extremely limited, I'm, I'm referring to the fact that if you walk outside right now, you have maybe four or five minutes before even a person in good condition um, is extremely impacted by the winds and the cold temperatures and uh, the, the, the freeze on the surface of your skin unless you're completely protected. So I would definitely want to focus on that. I do want to also highlight the fact that we have had first responders that have been stuck all night long, first responders that have gone out to try and rescue people that quite frankly probably should not have been out but they've been out all night. So now we're, we're working and have been working all night, all night long to try and assist the individuals who have been out there trying to assist uh, the public. So we're working through a lot of different things. We're working very closely with the utilities now. The winds seem to have come down a little bit. Uh, we expect uh, a, a full day of work coming from the utilities and, and hopefully more of the power to be restored. Um, but those are the type of things that, uh, you know, only Mother Nature will allow us to, to work our way through. But there are plenty of crews out there. It's just a matter of not whether or not the, the weather is going to allow them to be able to do that. So I would say probably the, the best information at this point is if you look out your window and it's just blowing a little bit and there's no snow, that can change in an instant. We know how it happens here in western New York. We know with the lake effect snow. So don't get that sense of, of arrogance that uh, it's really not that bad. Um, it is bad. It is really bad. It's just let up here. Um, it's all night long. It's been that pounding wind. It's been uh, drifts that, uh, that you cannot manage to work your way around. It's drifts in some cases now that are covering vehicles that we can't see as the plows uh, get out and, and try and clear this out. So we're working in a coordinated effort now to tow vehicles, to work with plows, to remove the snow, to work with law enforcement and other first responders. But uh, the number one priority now is to get the first response community back up and running, to get those primary lanes open. And by primary, I mean to and from hospitals, key routes is what our focus is going to be for the course of the day today. Um, and those key routes do not mean individuals should be out on the roads. Those key routes are for first responders and for people that need to get to and from the hospital, as well as employees that we're gonna be working with for critical, uh, critical facilities to make sure that we can get some shift change because at this point right now, you've got uh, law enforcement, fire, EMS, and dispatchers and hospital workers who have been working well over 24 hours. That will be our number one priority at this point. Um, so please stay off the roads. Even if it looks like your roads are, are fine, do not go out on the roads. Thank you. We have to uh, uh, commend every single first responder, law enforcement, fire, EMS, our, our folks at the 911 call centers and the dispatch centers in all the towns, cities, and villages. Uh, as the commissioner noted, they've been working, most of them, for more than 24 hours in a row. Uh, they've not been able to get uh, people to, re to replace them. Uh, the same goes with our friends at the hospitals. I was on the phone last night with uh, the presidents of the hospital associations locally, uh, and, and they're dealing with the same thing. They cannot get individuals to to come in and, and replace individuals who've been working in the hospital for more than 24 hours. And of course, there are limitations under New York State law as to how long somebody can work in a hospital setting. So uh, I just want to commend everyone who's uh, been working very hard for, for almost a whole day now uh, to get our community through one of the worst storms we have ever seen. Uh, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Chief Carney from the Erie County Sheriff's Office to talk a lot about what they were dealing with. And I really want to thank <coughs> all members of law enforcement and our, our deputies in the Erie County Sheriff's Office because they put themselves out in life-threatening situations to get to individuals who shouldn't have been on the road, but they were, and they have a responsibility to get out there and to try to save them. And I just want to thank you uh, and thank your teams for all the tremendous work that they did uh, in some of the worst conditions we'll ever see. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll be brief and I'll, I'll just reiterate what, what the county executive has said thus far. Um, to kind of simplify this storm, it's it's essentially a category three hurricane with a bunch of snow mixed in. Uh, and it's kind of been like that for the past 24 hours. So uh, we would just ask uh, again that everybody adhere to the driving ban. Um, we have deputies stranded in police vehicles. We've had to abandon um, almost 10 police vehicles. Uh, we have deputies stranded in their houses that we can't get to. Um, so they can't get in service. 
to help you. So we're just asking that you uh, stay home and, and ride this storm out at home as best you can. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the one part that people are wondering is why didn't we have plows out in the overnight hours? We couldn't because it was just too dangerous. They couldn't see where they were going. But we have plows out now. Uh, and we're also coordinating with third party contractors to come in and help us clear out the roads. We are actually trying to get a better idea. From what I've been told, and it's bare pavement because the wind is just blowing the snow off there. And then you can immediately come up to a section on, our, on the same road where it's a six to seven foot drift. So it's going to take some time to clear out the roads. That's why we can't have anybody else even attempting to get out there. But I'll turn it over to our Deputy Commissioner for the Department of Public Works, responsible for highways, Karen Hope, to talk a little bit more about what's going on. Thank you. Yes, just to follow up with what the county executive said, um, we it, it's, it's not often that we have to take our plows off of the roads. They've been off since last night in two of our maintenance districts. Uh, the men and women from our Department of Public Works are our veterans at, at plowing snow and dealing with winter in western New York. Uh, they have decades of experience and, and it is not often that they have to be in a stand down position. Uh, they are just getting back on the road, but just to you know manage the expectation of what that looks like, they're, they're carefully navigating the roads. Um, they're seeing a lot of obstacles in the way of vehicles that have been abandoned or power lines that are down. So they're making a um, you know, a very careful and slow attempt to keep everybody safe so that they, they can start clearing the roads. The other thing, too, is that this isn't a matter of just sending out snow plows. This is going to require our partnerships with private contractors using some of our specialized equipment so that we can clear the roadways so that we can address some of these um, emergency situations first. So again, stressing the importance of adhering to the travel ban, stay home, stay safe, so, so people can do their work to get everybody else home and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I just want to note that while we were not able to put plows out in our Hamburg, or excuse me, our Harlem and Clarence district uh, starting late afternoon overnight hours, we did have them out overnight in our Concord district, extreme southern uh, eastern part of Erie County, the Hamburg district, southern western part of Erie County, as well as the Aurora district, areas that normally get a lot of snow, and they did get snow. We had the plows out in the overnight hours, uh, but uh, we could put them out there because they did not have as bad conditions as, of course, what we're seeing in northern Erie County and the central part of the county. Uh, this, once again, is a storm that we will not forget, and we are not done with it. Uh, we, unfortunately, are going to be dealing with this storm throughout the daylight hours and, I believe, into the overnight hours once again. The best thing anyone can do is stay where you are. If you are in a life-threatening situation, you can call 911. Uh, you can also call 858 Snow. Uh, 911 first. Always call 911 first. If you are in a non life threatening situation, we ask you not to call those numbers because they are just getting bogged down with calls from individuals who, truthfully, are not in a life threatening situation. Uh, just want to ask everyone to hang in there. We know it is Christmas Eve and people want to be celebrating with their families. Uh, the best thing you can do is just stay where you are so that maybe you don't celebrate with your family Christmas Eve tonight. Maybe you don't even get home on Christmas, but hopefully you'll be home soon enough so that you can then celebrate the Christmas season as we hopefully do with regards to caring and loving each other every day of the year. Because the most important thing is your personal safety. And if it means you miss Christmas Eve at Grandma's house, that's okay. Uh, the most important thing is that in a day or two you're able to celebrate with your family all together safely. So please be safe during the situation. Uh, with that, I am going to uh, open it up to any questions from media. Let me just turn up my volume here so I can hear what we're going. Uh, I think we have uh, Ben Tujimodo from the Buffalo News. You just need to uh, uh, unmute your phone, Ben. Hey, Mark. Thanks for, uh, uh, thanks for meeting with us. Um, Last night, the uh, the Buffalo fire, uh, it seemed like it was having a lot of obstacles just in, in terms of getting places. Um, do you have any, any sense of how severe just getting, you know, fire trucks around was? Uh, it was very severe. Uh, I don't have the, uh, I think Buffalo fire would probably be best, but I know there was more than 10 fire trucks, we believe, that were stuck at various points. I saw a post from uh, Peg Overdorf, the former head of the uh, Valley Community Center, that uh, 
uh, one of the fire department uh, rigs got stuck right around a corner from her and she actually brought the fire uh, fires into her home so they could be warm. I'll turn it over to our commissioner of emergency services, uh, Dan Never, to talk a little bit more because they've been getting those reports, but it was horrible. City of Buffalo is ground zero. It's as, it's as simple as that. And as we noted earlier, uh, we, we just, equipment couldn't get just a few blocks it's not like they were traveling miles. Like ECMC, there was a major issue with a, with a one-year-old baby just a few blocks away from ECMC, and they, no one could get to the home uh, because of how bad it was. So, Commissioner? Yeah, without getting into too many of the specifics, the uh, city of Buffalo can give you the, the exact number, but I, I can tell you whether it's ambulances, uh, whether it happens to be patrol cars or fire apparatus, um, it is pretty much a no-go. Um, in a lot of the areas. So uh, the, there has been a significant amount of the apparatus that has been um, put to the side um, and uh, it's the next piece of apparatus up when need be. So some of those things, I mean, they're still functional as far as fire departments go. And, uh, but transportation of, uh, of patients within uh, a, a wide range of communities, including the city of Buffalo, is next to impossible at this point. And that's why I know that our number one priority is going to be, and now that things have let up slightly, is to get those primary routes open. Those primary routes are going to be for one thing and one thing only, getting essential people and patients to and from uh, the facilities that they need to get to, whether it's a hospital or whether it's a critical facility like uh, communications or uh, a business maybe that needs to keep up and running and functional um, because they're, they're essential. So uh, keep that in mind, and that's why we keep stressing the fact, stay off the road. We can't open up that single lane in each direction um, so somebody can come on out and do the sightseeing. So as far as the specific numbers, uh, we can get you those with regards to uh, numbers of uh, pieces of equipment. I can tell you that we actually have one of the local volunteer ambulances um, that uh, we, we rescued from the emergency operations center, brought them back here for overnight. Um, they're from the Colden area, so we hope to be able to get their not only their rig but also their their personnel who who did what they do as volunteers. They went out, they grabbed the patient, they braved the conditions to get that patient to the hospital, and on their way back, uh, they ran into issues. So, again, these are the type of things where one uh, one little incident uh, in a community like Colden, their ambulance is out of service now and have to go to other communities, and it's a three four hour trip and weather like this just to get to the hospital, and in some cases, ambulances aren't even making it back. So um, it's a case-by-case -case basis, but um, there are a lot of pieces of equipment, as you heard law enforcement, the sheriff alone. And um, every one of these individuals that's been out all night long has, has been going above and beyond um, the call of duty. And uh, we definitely want to, to salute them and to thank them for everything they're doing and will continue to do despite this daunting task that we have. Uh, thank you. We have uh, one other call-in user. I'm not certain what station that is. Do you have any questions? Hi, Mark. It's Ranch calling from Channel 7. Thanks for taking my phone call. Um, I am trying to get some information about that one person in particular uh, right near ECMC uh, because there's a lot of conversation on Facebook about this person, and the talk is that this baby is in dire straits. So I'm wondering what kind of efforts there are to get to this mom and her baby um, in the next couple of hours to try and help them, I, I guess, as we move forward here. Uh, that is something we have been aware of, as I brought up. Uh, it was a lot of discussion during the overnight hours as we were trying to assist. I'll turn it back over to the commissioner. Uh, it is one of our highest priorities. Uh, the issue is trying to get a generator to that location. Uh, we were trying to find other locations that maybe the baby could have been taken to, but it just appears that they, we can't take the baby without risking the life. So uh, it is a number one priority. Do you have anything else to add? No, just uh, all that I would add to that is the fact that with everything going on, that certainly was our number one priority during the overnight hours. Um, we do have many, many stories along the lines of that, too. This uh, is something, though, that 
that uh, most of the people in the, the emergency operations center took to heart and, and a lot of people have been working on. So we're trying to resolve that as quickly as possible. The best way that we can do that is to now get uh, a path open so that we can actually get uh, the individual to a definitive treatment and or warmth in this particular case or or to get them to a place that uh, that actually has electricity so there's been a lot of energy uh, put into a lot of the issues that we've had overnight but i think this one rose to the top and now that we have uh, some units from the national guard coming in now that we actually have plows that are back out on the road the city of buffalo as well um, we hope that there will be a positive resolution of this fairly quickly and Mark, just one more question. Uh, there's a lot of talk on Facebook as well about uh, using snowmobiles to try and get to these people who are stranded. Uh, I know in the last storm, the uh, state provided some of that emergency equipment. Is that a request of the state right now as well to bring in that life-saving equipment from the National Guard crap? Uh, well, we've requested whatever they can provide. Uh, the National Guard will not be coming in with snowmobiles or coming in with Humvees. Uh, we have made requests, I know in the overnight hours, requests were made to the Western New York Snowmobile Association uh, for snowmobilers who might be able to help out. Part of the problem was uh, the snowmobilers themselves can't tell where they're going because the conditions are so bad. They, they may have the ability to traverse some of this snowy terrain, but they, they, did, they couldn't tell where they were going either. So it was not a situation necessarily where having a fleet of snowmobilers uh, could have made a big difference. Uh, though now that we have daylight hours and it's easier to see, uh, there, there had, the request has been made. Uh, I don't want people to think we haven't asked for whatever we can get. We're asking for whatever we can get. And the state has given us, and the governor gave me assurance that not only would the uh, National Guard be coming from uh, Niagara Falls, but that a group of National Guardsmen are driving in from Horseshoe uh, in the southern part of the count, uh, state to uh, assist as well. I just don't know when they're going to be here. Uh, we're, we'll take all hands on deck, but we also need professional hands on deck. We just don't need people who are trying to go out to be a good Samaritan, putting themselves in a bad situation. The example of the, the ambulance crew from Colden is a good example. Even in the areas that haven't had a tremendous amount of snow, those first responders are trying to help out in this area. I know Seneca Hose was intimately involved in life-saving uh, uh, rescues outside of their normal district, going into South Buffalo, going into Kaisertown area. Uh, so if you're in parts of West Seneca, where normally you'd, no, you'd have Seneca Hose uh, volunteers addressing a, a matter, uh, they're trying to help us in other areas, so they might not be able to help you. That's why we want everyone to stay indoors. Uh, you're not helping anyone if you get out there and you get in a car accident uh, and then we have to divert uh, first responders to an area where there really shouldn't have been anyone on the roads anyway. So uh, this is uh, all hands on deck, but we just, there's only so much equipment. I, I don't want people to think that the county has a fleet of 100 snowmobiles. We don't. Neither does the state. Neither does the city. Uh, we are trying to move in additional equipment. Uh, one of the things that's also a problem is that the worst hit areas are some of the areas that generally get the least amount of snow in the county. Uh, for example, we have track vehicles from our parks department at Spragbrook Park. I know the sheriff's office has snowmobiles down at Emory Park. Those areas haven't gotten a whole lot of snow. And so the goal is to move some of that equipment up here today. Uh, but we also couldn't take it away from where it was initially because the original reports were for a county-wide blizzard. And so it would just be difficult to say we're going to move something from the Colden area up to Buffalo when we were told we were also going to have significant snowfall and blizzard conditions in the other areas. So uh, we, we have a limited amount of equipment. We staged it where we thought it was appropriate. Now we're trying to move it so it's better. And with that, and Mark, just uh, finally, I have, Ms. Uh, can I just ask one more question? Ed, I got to uh, go. You mentioned that there were. I gotta, uh, we have to go, Ed, because we've got to get on a call with the state. Uh, I, I do appreciate everyone's uh, participation, uh, and we will be giving an update with more information soon. Uh, but we do have to get on a call with the state with regards to uh, determination of, of where assets are going. So to all, be safe, be well, stay where you are. Even if you've lost power, it's better to be indoors in a place that's 40 or 45 degrees than to be outside in wind chills that are below zero. Uh, it is still a life-threatening situation out there. Stay indoors. It is your best place to be. Uh, be safe and well to all.